So when I train folks for Sony on the 8000 series, I usually kind of like to start out with a 40,000 foot overview of the switcher. So let's start over here with the crosspoint module. The crosspoint module comes in either 16 crosspoints, 24 crosspoints, or this, which is 32. That's 32 buttons from here to here, not including the ME cascade buttons. Moving to the right, we have the transition module. This portion here allows you to select what type of transition. Here's your fader arm. Over here selects all four keyers and the transition generators for those keyers. Moving to the right here, this is just a preview switcher. This allows you to change the edit pre what we call the edit preview bus so that you can just quickly take a look at something on another ME without actually having to delegate it down on program preset. The master fade to black button allows you to take the entire system to black. Notice that it is now red, high tally, and the program bus has no high tally anymore because fade to black is high tallied. Put it back on the air here. Moving to the right, this is called the 10 key pad. The 10 key pad is kind of the master area of the switcher. This is where you have the ability to store multiple things on the switcher simultaneously as opposed to locally. Up here allows you to select things like what type of effect you're doing. These buttons here allow you to choose what region will be included in the effect. Moving up, this is the device control module. The device control module is pretty unique to a Sony switcher. Not only does it give you basic and advanced transport controls, but it has something that is pretty well found on most Sony video tape recorders, which is the jog shuttle knob. And if you listen carefully, it has the magnetic clutch, which you find on pretty much all Sony VTRs. This allows you to shuttle to know where detent is, so when you're going backwards and forward. It also allows you to jog, and it's meant to emulate a Sony VTR. You even have the ability to do dynamic motion control. And if you're really advanced, you can do that on a keyframe by keyframe basis, letting you actually change the speed that a deck is playing back in a timeline. Lastly up here, this allows you to see what all your time code displays are. I have current time code, start time code, and stop time code. Moving up a little bit, this is the keyframe panel. To the left of the fader bar is everything that you'd use to play back a timeline, and to the right of the fader bar is everything that you would use to edit a timeline. Moving up, this is the positioner controller. Now on the 8000, we offer two different versions of this. We offer this one, which is the trackball controller. This allows you to have X and Y position with the ball inside, and Z position with the ring on the outside, called the Z ring. Sony also offers a three-dimensional joystick. So if you prefer the joystick rather than the trackball, that kind of keeps in with Sony's philosophy of whatever you want to do with the panel, you can do with the panel. Moving over here now, we have the FlexiPad. It's called a FlexiPad because its function is flexible. Depending on what button is lit over here, you may be able to set a transition rate, you may be able to set a snapshot, which is Sony's term for setting the status of an ME, or something like a macro. Notice as I push these buttons, the color LCDs inside this change to show what the FlexiPad is now getting ready to do. For instance, on snapshot, it's showing me not only which regions have something in them, but also the name of the register. If I go to transition rate, it just turns this into a keypad. Now in addition to the built-in hard drive that is inside the control panel, Sony also offers this module, which is the external memory module, which allows you to do things like use a Sony memory stick and a standard USB pen drive in order to store your effects off of the hard drive onto something that you can take with you. Moving to the left, this is called the key control module. This is where all 16 keyers in the switcher are controlled. You have the ability to delegate which ME and which key you're adjusting, also what key type, all sorts of things like whether auto select is being used, type of drop shadows, and whether or not you want to be able to do things like put a DME channel on a keyer or turn on the internal resizer. As you adjust things, knobs become available. You can adjust knobs, they all have a readout. In this case right here, I'm adjusting clip, gain, and density for a key. Moving to the left is the shot box module. The shot box is Sony's way of letting you recall a whole bunch of stuff all at the same time. Now I could do that from the 10 keypad as we talked about earlier. I could also do it from the flexi pad. But Shopbox gives me access to 24 buttons all at the same time. And they have the same color LCD technology that the flexi pad does. For instance, I can look on the Shopbox module here and see different things. Here's a replay effect. Here's something to bring a bug in and out. But in addition, I also have four different pages. So here is numbers 1 through 24. I hit this one, I now go from number 25 to 48. And all the labels change inside the buttons, so there's no ambiguity on what I'm going to call up. 
or I don't have to remember what number 34 is. I can see that number 34 is four box sub. And I can also change what these buttons do. Let's say I've got a whole bunch of shot box registers, but I have some registers left over. I've got a bank three here, and I've assigned this button, number 50, to be preview safe title toggle, which really has nothing to do with timelines or anything. It's just a button. Now when I toggle the button, I can turn safe title on and off. Notice that it turns green to say it's on, yellow to turn it off. Now this module is the standard transition module, which is sold on most of the switchers. Every once in a while, space is at a premium, so we offer the compact transition module. Now this one is about a third of a rack width shorter, and notice that the keys here are aligned vertically instead of horizontally, and there's a couple of missing buttons, but most of the functionality is maintained with the compact transition module if space is at a premium. Now this module is the aux bus module, and what it allows you to do is control the up to 48 aux buses you can have in the MVS-8000G. This top row up here is your aux bus delegate. This allows me to decide which aux bus that I'm going to change my sources into. So for instance, if I press this, I'm now changing what's going into aux bus 1. If I press this button, I can now change what's going into aux bus 2. The labels on top are kind of nice because they allow me to see what's already routed into an aux bus without having to delegate it first. So I can see up here that aux 12 has DDR1 in it without actually having to delegate aux 12 just to see that. And over on this side, this area here allows me to use the aux panel as a router panel. If the MVS-8000G is connected to a routing switcher, pressing this button will turn this aux panel into a XY panel for your router system. Here I have level one, two, three, four for video, audio, time code, RS-422, any of those things. I also have a button for destinations, which allows me to change destinations on the router as well.